Hey ya fellas, Nick here. I'm a very busy guy. Lately I've been trying to see if I can change things about my life so I can make it more efficient. So to save time on things like my mail, I've decided I'm going to start getting it all on just one big day where all my mail can clump together. That day just so happens to be today. Besides all my junk mail, I got all my medical supplies in today. I like to make sure that they're disguised so nobody takes it though. I mean, any normal person will just see this as a copy of Marble Blaster on the PC. I like to see it as my weekly supply of Advil. Marbles. You ever been there before? When I grew up, I want to be just like him. Well, now you can with the 2002 release Marble Blaster and its 2003 level update, Marble Blast Gold. The history behind this pair of games is an odd one, beginning with Garage Games and one of their previous titles, Chain Reaction. Art and music was recycled from that game during Marble Blaster's production in summer 2002. Most notably, the art style of Don Carson, who designed Toontown. Disneyland is officially part of the Marble canon. Looking at the two games side by side, it's easy to see where the games have similarity. The game was released in December 2002, and the next year in May saw Marble Blast Gold release. But enough backstory, let's get onto the actual game and see if it has more variety than my mail right now. Uh, it seems like everything is just about my f***ing taxes. Well, here we are. Right off the bat, this game reeks of I made for kindergartners. To its credit, the cartoony style is nailed quite well. I'm just split on my opinions with it. On one hand, it's neat to have this style, but it is just so ugly. These platforms really just consist of nothing but bright and saturated colors that made the game have this weird feeling of, I don't feel like a marble. I know I sound like an idiot for asking a game about being a funny circle to be grounded in reality, but imagine if this game was grounded in something like a kid's room where you could start with maybe like a toy box, traversing desks, making you truly feel like a marble. What? Don't laugh at me. Ever since I was five years old, I've always wanted to be a marble. So, what's the true core of the gameplay here? You roll your marble from the start plate to the end plate without falling into the abyss. Sometimes there's gems to collect before exiting, power-ups that temporarily modify the marble, or hazards that make things harder. Each level is timed and has a faster gold time to beat. Some levels are timed too, meaning you'll have to beat the qualify time to unlock the level. If you don't read this block of text in the level select screen though, you'll probably not even realize the timer is there, because the game will let you beat the level but won't tell you that because oops you actually suck, do it again! Controlling the marble is pretty simple, I'd be scared if they made it difficult. There's pretty much no way to make a marble hard to understand, like it's a fucking sphere, calm down Jerry! When you get used to the controls it has a massive skill ceiling to reveal. It's no wonder it's always been the speedrunning community around this game, the only thing is the marble never really feels like you can get used to it. The marble controls are much more slippery and less responsive compared to other games. You really don't see anything like it because it's a, a, a fucking marble. A lot of the gameplay feels like I should want to go fast in it, but I never do because eventually if I slow down, it's damn near impossible with this buttered up sphere. And once you have to do precision-based platforming in the later levels, I want to give up. The game is nice in the beginning with its simple trauma being a little platformer game, figuring out the best way to traverse the world, maybe even aiming for the gold time. Then, by the time I hit the later levels, I get the sudden urge to write my will. I ran out of paper to write my will with, so I'm using this newspaper instead. But enough about that, let's get on to the true meat of this game, the levels. Let's start with the basics. Marble Blast sorts its levels into three categories, beginner, intermediate, and expert. I'll be going over each category separately, on top of making another category for the levels that Marble Blast Gold has. It's like how I have a category for all my mail about health insurance. First is the 24 beginner levels. I hate almost all of these. The first level teaches you exclusively nothing but how to move, and I can't even get that right because the game instructs you to be sent careening into the abyss. Ah! I really don't know why the game has to be filled out with two dozen levels that work as poorly done and heavily fragmented tutorials. Even with so many tutorials for things, they still feel uncommunicative. It's like my electric bill. I just don't understand what it's trying to tell me. Level 2 sees you collecting a bunch of gems in a flat square. The best way I found to describe it is like cleaning up a room as a janitor. Why do I do it for free? Level 3, jump training. The space bar does what? Level 4 is when the power-ups begin getting explained by the game, so I'll explain them in the order that the game does. First is a super jump, which shoots you up in the air, even higher if you jump regularly. Next is level 6 is super speed, which shoots you super fast. Wee! Oh, I'm dead. Level 9's gyrocopter makes you fall slower like you're light or something. Level 10's time travel bonuses aren't really power-ups, but are worth mentioning. They freeze the clock usually for 5 seconds, and in a game about fastest times, it's a great optional pickup. You can make your time faster with them, but they're in unfavorable positions that, if you don't use your time wisely, 
it could just nullify you going there and getting the power up. Level 11 Super Bounce makes you bouncier for 6 seconds and really only gets used when you fall a long way and need to bounce up a long way. Level 12's Gravity Modifier changes gravity to where the arrow's pointing when you pick it up. I hate this power up, and later level design will show why. Level 13 Shock Absorber makes you not bounce when you fall and is literally only used when you have to hit a slope after falling for a long time. Also, the tutorial doesn't even work because you can just fall on the platform and miss the point of the shock absorber completely. Now that I've gone over the other power-ups, let's quickly go over all the other levels and get to some actually good stuff. Level 5 and 7 are platforms that move in a direction. Level 8 teaches you to move while falling. Level 14 teaches you to slow down and get this gem. Level 15 teaches you that mud has little friction, grass has lots of friction, and space has no friction. Mud is the worst mechanic in this game. Thank the level design! Level 16 through 20 tell you about hazards. Don't touch bumpers, don't touch landmines, don't touch trap doors. These three will be barely used in the game. The other two are fans and tornadoes, which do a terrible job of being a hazard. There's just some general range around it where you get pushed around by them, especially the tornado. And I don't really feel like I'm being shown what I did wrong. I just went in the radius where it picks me up and uh-oh, now you're bad. And there we go. We're now left with four levels in the beginner section that aren't total jokes. Actually, forget what I said because level 21 pitfalls is literally just straight paths with holes in them. Platform party. You wait for platforms to move to you. Peak entertainment. Four out of ten. Winding road. It's a generic path where you use the super jump and then the gyro Helicopter 4 out of 10. And the last level, Grand Finale, where you use various power-ups to get all the levels. This is the only level worth anything out of the first quarter of the level set. Nice! 6 out of 10. Overall, the beginner levels are... bad. Besides the last few levels, there's not that much interesting to play here. It feels like padding where they can say, oh, the game has 100 levels, when in reality these levels can be completed faster than I can evade my taxes. <laughs> Next are the 24 intermediate levels, which are actually worthy enough to be called a level. Jump 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 is another janitor level where you go around an area finding gems, but if you have the skill for it, go for all these time travel bonuses. 4.5 out of 10. Monster Speedway Qualifying is a racetrack with gems and speed boosters. I hope you like flying off the map. 5 out of 10. Skate Park, aka janitor level 3, because it is literally just some slow platforms of 8. 18 gems, what the fuck? Ramp Matrix, janitor level 4, but hold on, buddy, it's not on a flat plane? Well, that's an 11 out of 10 level right there. Hoops, remember when I said precision isn't the greatest with the marble? No, well, too bad, because this level is terrible for that sole reason. Or maybe it's because my pitiful lack of basketball skills. Transfer over to video games. Five basketballs out of ten. Go for the green take some skill, because you can either go in the middle hole and finish the level really easily, or go in the bigger hole and go through the level normally. 5.5 .5 out of ten. Solely because having the option is cool. Fork in the road is a giant mess of paths you need to find the ending to. Four out of ten. Try twist is janitor level five, but we're really spicing things up here. Now you have three floors of each with gems, and you have to get all the gems on one floor before going to the next. <gasps> Marble Tris, some Tetris blocks are moving and you have to get the gems. The Tetris blocks add absolutely nothing. Just three gems to collect that are not made harder or easier by the Tetraminos. Two out of 10. Space Slide is like one of three levels of space terrain used, which is already pathetic. The idea is great though. You need to try and line yourself up to avoid the mines because once you're in the space terrain, you can't move. It's actually a good idea. Six out of 10. Ski Ball bonus, you get a longer time freeze if you aim for the highest hole, just like real Ski Ball, making it for something actually fun. 6.5 out of 10. Marble Playground is generally to level 6, but making it different now is there's gravity modifiers, which make it even more confusing. My favorite part is when the gravity modifier is sent you into the abyss because the camera doesn't let you see where you're going. This game makes me gravity phobic. Hop, skip, and a jump teaches you to control the marble in the air better. This section with the gyrocopter is way too simple, though, but I would like to see a level all about flying around the gyrocopter for a lot longer. 5 out of 10. Take the high road doesn't deserve to be talked about because there's also a low road. The video game lied to me. Also, these circle platforms are terrible to climb up. 4 to 10. Half pipe is like kind of janitor level 7, but with an actually unique gimmick. You can't get all the gems just by rolling around, so you need to time your speed and jump boost well to get them. A solid 5 out of 10. Bonus points were added for being interesting, but bonus points were removed for being a janitor level. Gauntlet is not as hard as its name makes it sound. You roll forwards, then you jump sometimes at the start, avoid some moving blocks, then jump boost at the end. 4 to 10. Moto Marble Cross combines my two least favorite things, mud and liars. Get around track in less than 32 seconds. Time to qualify 54 seconds. Which is it? This is like Monster Speedway, but lame because you don't go as Fast. 0 out of 10. One point added for every time he didn't lie. Shock drop is the exact same thing as beginner 13 shock absorber, but without the walls around it. Why is this here? Spork in the road is like fork in the road, but with gems. Make something original. Great divide is just another platform waiting simulator, and when you get to the top, you just jump. Three platforms out of 10. The wave is a bunch of platforms moving like a, a, a wave. A 
four waves at a time. Tornado Alley. It's one tornado you have to avoid. That's it. This is level 46. We are halfway through the game, and this is the kind of level that gods of marbles bestow upon us. Monster Speedway is another clone, but this time it's more gems. Ugh. And lastly, Upward Spiral. Incredibly easy, except for this part, which it gets super complex for no reason. That was anticlimactic. 3.5 upwards out of 10 spirals. My final thought on the intermediate levels is that they're pretty good compared to the beginner levels, but the beginner levels were not setting that high of a standard. It's like how the government has to have their expectations really low for me paying my water bill. Because if you think I'm paying for that, you're fucking dumb. Yeah, I can't avoid these anymore. Welcome to the 52 expert levels. Still separating them into the 24 original levels and the 20 added levels from gold. Thrill ride is not thrilling and is barely a ride. Don't let them fool you. You ride on these automatic platforms for a second, and then you have to do these sharp circular turns around edges that give no security. 3 out of 10. Money tree is generator level 8, but instead of an empty lot, it's on a tree. How exciting. I don't care. 4 trees out of 10. Fan lift takes a hazard. It expects you to work with it. If the developer makes a hazard helpful, it is not even a hazard. Fail out of 10. Leap of faith is really annoying because you either have to be incredibly precise on the ground or really precise with the jump boost. I hate this level. One gem out of 10. Freeway crossing. I can't believe Crossy Road was made in 2002 for a marble rolling game. This level is weird and unpredictable. Five car crashes out of 10. <laughs> Stepping Stones is the ninth janitor level. 16.6% of the 54 levels so far have been collect the gems in an area. 1.66 out of 10. Obstacle course is neat because I can pick the way I want to go. This area with the vertical piston things is kind of annoying though. Five obstacles out of 10. Points of the compass is terrible because it takes a lot of fast jumping to get on the platforms and the marble is way too bouncy for precise landing on small platforms. Whoever put these purple blocks on the path is an asshole. Four out of 10. Threefold maze is terrible and I refuse to consider this a level. This is why the gravity modifier shouldn't exist. Three folds out of ten. Tube treasure is special because we have officially now hit janitor level ten. <laughs> we are now over 17% of the levels so far being gem collectors. This is one of the worst ones because there's actually an order you can get wrong, meaning you'll have parts of the map be inaccessible because you went to the lower area by mistake. Collecting gems in a specific order. That's it, 4 out of 10. Slip and slide, watch out for bumpers. Oh cool, do you mean these triangular bumpers the player just learned about for the first time? For a game that has an entire level dedicated to a space bar tutorial, I'm surprised this bumper wasn't given its own entire level. This level also introduces oil spills, which have barely any friction, and we're in top of four. It's below the mud and friction, but above the space. Speaking of mud, it's in this level. I hate it. This level has a timer on it, so instead I went for the gold time by skipping half the level and jumping on the corners. 4 out of 10. Skyscraper is just a moving platform level but you can make it faster with these time freezers and these jump boosters. The platforms can get pretty small, and it does take a bit to realize which path is the fastest that you have to be on. 6 out of 10. Half Pipe Elite, the 11th generator level, and it's annoying. There's this gem in between the half pipes, so unlike the others, you can't just launch into the air and hope you get it. 4 half pipes out of 10. Amazing is literally just guessing which path will get you to the end. 5 mazes out of 10. Block Party makes me hate gravity changers. You have to come to a complete stop every time you change gravity, or risk bouncing into the abyss. You have to figure out where each gem is, and even when you think you have them all, the game's f***ing with you, because there's three gems hiding by the finish. Why? Three gravitational forces out of ten. Trapdoor Madness is like the first time I've seen a trapdoor be used in this game. Just get the gems and leave. 4 out of 10. Mobius Strip is like Block Party's issues with gravity changing, but so much more tedious. If you go even a little fast, you'll fly off the edge of the map, but you also have to go fast around the actual twist part, because if you don't, you'll also slip off the edge of the map. Two strips out of 10. Great Divide Revisited is stop remaking your old levels, especially when they're waiting simulators. Escher's Race is like threefold maze, but timed and more gems and worse. No out of 10. To the moon, flip the gravity in the opposite direction and then fall on the platform in the sky. Two out of 10. Around the world in 30 seconds would have been nice if the gravity mechanics worked. Again, you can't fly off the edge because you'll miss the gravity pickup, but you have to go fast enough to go over the edge and not roll into the cartoon void of green circles. Also, not every edge has a gravity modifier, so you just have to guess which edge has one, and if you aren't fast enough, you will just roll off the slope into the void. 3 seconds out of 10. Will-O-Wisp is a level I was stuck on for a while because this level is really just all about routing. The touching this thing moves a thing mechanic from the level hoops finally returns for two buttons you can press. The platforms have a really annoying and thin shape, which makes it pretty hard, but overall it's okay. 5 out of 10. Twisting the night away is just a bunch of annoying hazards being annoying. Get the gems, get out. 
4 out of 10. And the last level for Marble Blaster, Survival of the Fittest. Wait on a platform and then go on it, dodge the obstacles, get to the end. Terrible out of 10. Overall, there's a lot of annoying bullshit to be had in the expert levels. But let's see if they make it better with the 20 expert levels that were added in Marble Blast Gold. I am on my hands and knees begging for something good, both in the game and in this mail, because it's just all bills and shitty game design. First up, Plumber's Portal is really confusing when you get into the inside of the pipes and gravity starts flipping, so I forget where to go and what way to do this or that. It's weird and confusing to me, 4.5 out of 10. Siege took me forever to beat because these pistons are really annoying to control, but one good thing is the power-up usage in this level. Like, if you're not confident in landing your jumps, you have the option to take the shock absorber, and your jumps will be guaranteed to land where you stay. You won't bounce off. 5.5 out of 10. Ski Slopes really demonstrates how bad the game is at letting you go fast. Once you get speed, there's no way to really guide yourself well, so I just don't. I just go slow. 4 slopes out of 10. Ramps reloaded as ramp matrix, but now there's two of them. Why would you redo a janitor level? Tower Maze, I hope you like memorizing which platforms go up the fastest. 2 out of 10. Free fall you uh, fall in a straight line down y out of 10 acrobat i think i beat this one wrong but i don't care have the piston below launch you into the sky try not to clip out of bounds and i clipped out of bounds land on the left platform get the gem and finished five out of ten whirl is a more platform heavy level why do these curved platforms have an edge that mudslide is misery i hate the mud and it's only gonna get worse from here so strap in i like the more organic bends and curves the game gives but the marble is already way too slippery and the mud just makes it so much worse get the gems and then finish mud out of 10 Pipe dreams. Get the gems as you go down the pipes. I love going fast and building up speed and having half a second to react to this turn. Why do you exist? Scaffold. Why am I platforming on trap doors? I don't understand why you're letting me use hazards to my advantage. Uh, Airwalk is like fan lift, but there's fans everywhere and gems everywhere and it's so loud. Shimmy is platforming on mud. It's getting worse. Mud out of 10. Path of least resistance is nearly worse than Escher's race because it's completely mud. The only thing saving this level is the terrain with normal friction on the edges but even then it's really difficult. One out of 10. Day to listen. I take back what I said about Path of Least Resistance because this is literally the worst level in this game. Not only is the third mud level in a row, but it's somehow worse than the previous two. It's like Path of Least Resistance, but with gems to collect and space floor. Can can I call this level, level 12 for the janitors? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that now. 1.2 out of 10. Ordeal has some annoying moments and some easy moments. The platforms moving on a loop is easy. This gravity shifting part of the sloped area is annoying or out of deal. Battlements, you're like storming a castle. It feels like an actual challenge with jumps that feel difficult but not overly hard. Besides these fans, I hate fans. 6.5 out of 10. Pinball wizard, you become the pinball. And it's just at the right angle to be incredibly aggravating and uncontrollable. I, the storm is like fan lift but worse because you have to use the tornado. <laughs> Dive is a giant ramp you have to go down to build momentum. And it's really fun until you fly off the edge of the map. It's okay though, I've mastered this level. I could do anything. No, I cannot. Dive out of 10. Tightrope. You don't deserve to be talked about. Natural selection is another get on the thing to avoid the thing level. Please show me what is naturally selective about this because I do not see it. Tango is another mud level when I have to jump between curved platforms. <laughs> Icarus, precisely bounce on these platforms of super bounce. It's actually pretty fun, besides the part where you carefully grab the gems, so 5 out of 10. Under construction is more platforming challenges with small platforms. Pretty fun, minus the small platform part. 6 out of 10. Pathways is a bunch of bumpers moving on small pathways. They move on a set of paths, so have fun memorizing to get the gems. Also, there's landmines everywhere. Were these playtested? Darwin's Dilemma is another platform waiting simulator. Who is Darwin? What does he have to do with this? And the finale. Level 100 king of the mountain. This truly is a test of everything in the game, both good and bad. It's a real platforming challenge, taking skills in the game taught previously, using power-ups in basic ways that don't feel like a gimmick. But you also have to platform on trap doors and there's fans... So, you know, minus points for fans. Despite my prejudice towards fans, I think it's outweighed by the actual fun I got out of playing a level that asked me to platform. Does that make me good at the game? God, no. 7 out of 10. So that was the expert levels. There's a lot of nice levels, but there's also a lot of bullshit too. Marble Blast Gold is still hard to recommend, though. It seems like it's going through its growing stages in the sense that it's figured out its gameplay in some levels, but not every level feels like it is fit to play in Marble Blast. Maybe it could be fit in another game, but it doesn't fit here. Also, this game's engine is just so broken, it's kind of endearing to see. Like, have you seen speedruns? Look at this! Overall, in the sequels, like Marble Blast Ultra, and fan games like Marble Blast Platinum, 
we're probably going to see the evolution of this game. But if you're planning to play Marble Blast Gold, it's hard to recommend casually. It's not really very easy unless you spend a lot of time just getting into the engine and understanding it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have the last of my mail to get to. Uh, I dealt with all my unpaid bills. And now I just have a couple more things to get to. Thankfully, I have this normal bottle of Advil, so, you know, in case I need any, I can just take one. Now I'm just confused. <laughs> 